hours into the ninth day of September Talk about Luciferian, Luciferianism. And I think that's it. What miss, what he misses, is the entire structure of Washington D.C. is laid out uh, in Masonic symbology. Now I said before, Mason, Mason, Masonry is simply the guild, and that a lot of the Gnostics hid themselves within the guild. They, they're the ones who created the unions. Unions, unions that exist today owe their existence to the Gnostics. Because this is, they're the ones who created it. And they did it to hide their work. None of this stuff, none of this, 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 this is the what uh, people who don't plan to be about all the conspiracy theories claim to know about the symbology of of these Gnostic of these symbo, of Gnostic symbols. Well, you know what this means, don't you? And, and of course they give you something along the lines of, you know, of a particular um, oh, this is pedophilia, this is this, this is, you know, this is, you know, of course the sign for this, the sign for that. And they're wrong. They're completely wrong. They have no understanding of what's actually going on. This is this is the case because there are things you cannot talk about. If, if you know what the symbology is, and how it works, you can't say it. You can't talk about it. But these are the these are the forbidden areas. So you leave it for other discussions and for people who become more let's say enlightened. And this is not anything you can talk to Lionel LeBron about because he is nowhere near what he needs to be in, in terms of his level of knowledge of Gnosis to understand what's going on. And this is why he berates him. It's, it, 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 it's, and again, he's, he's right about the vigilantes. But the vigilantes have, are not, again, there is no fundamental control. What it is, is a sort of, you create a common interest, and then you allow the common interest to evolve in the person not the place within that, 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 that field. 
And what a lot of the, the people don't realize is well, why all these things going on? Why all these suicides? We're talking about you know, children suicide. And, and suicide in general. Mental health. Well, a lot of people I know were very depressed during COVID. They needed their social life to deprive them of their social life to help And they were lost. They stopped talking, they stopped communicating, and they become introverted. And introverted, introverted, when you're introverted, I know this for myself when I do a lot of studying, there is a disconnect from general society. And you have a hard time when you get back into society relating to the people around you. And this, in many cases, is not such a case that if a person, like, like as Lionel says, there is nothing else beyond this, you've got to focus on the here and now because there's nothing more later, well then, why stick around? The more is, all this has to be done is be subjective. Person, the, the demon doesn't have to go and kill the person. All they have to do is simply suggest that the person might be better off dead than they are alive. And that would be the beginning of the end. But it does, the person will sort of struggle with this back and forth. But as the struggle continues, the person gets increasingly tired. And I know this from some several people of work with the word suicidal, but I was able to convince them to you know, not to. But it took it took a couple of years. It didn't happen overnight. Right? It took a couple of years. We didn't talk to them. And they were in situations where they really couldn't help themselves out. And so you had to be the one to talk them through the crisis. A lot of that, a lot of it, it was that. You're talking to person through their crisis. Whatever that crisis is, however, however often it occurs, and when it occurs. Because there is a when the crisis occurs. So if a crisis occurs at 3 o'clock in the morning, and you're going to get a phone call at 3 a.m., you better be there to answer the phone call. If you're not, you're going to be in a lot of trouble. Because once the person stops talking, that's the danger point. When a person talks about suicide, or their particular issues, that's not where the problem is. The problem is when they stop talking about it. And when they stop talking about suicide, they've made up their minds. And they're going to commit suicide. That's when the, that's when the that's when the, the danger occurs. And this is where for almost any therapist, when you don't get a phone call from your patient and they're no longer freaking out, that's a sign that you've got a problem, a very serious problem. dealt with most of it doesn't have to be, oh thank you, it doesn't have to be uh, preached or anything like that, parents who talk about going to hell and stuff like that are not doing their kids any, any service, you know, but again this comes out of the Christian, Christian evangelicals who, you know, sorry to say if you are offended by this, but fundamentally they're not Christian. They're within, within the Gnostics, they're within the Gnostic experience, within the Gnostic uh, sections of society, uh, in terms of the spectrum. And that Gnosticism puts us outside of early Christianity. Only the early Christianity really has the sense and then this is where we get into the Gnostic understanding, the, not, the full out Gnostic understanding. The majority of the Gnosticism, except for Eastern Christianity, is one where 
there is no real connection to God, you always go back into this the, sort of this, you know, the existence of a negative and positive energies in space and time. So in other words, you become part of the universe and you just sort of you lose your identity and just become one with the background. And this is what most of the gurus teach, becoming one with the background, just let go. Let everything, you know, nothing really matters, so just let everything go. And this, 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 this is their, their teaching. It is only within the early Christian understanding that you have on that path of Gnosis that you have a direct relationship with God that actually become one with God without losing your identity. And this is one of the feasts we're celebrating today, one of the saints that I have a relationship with. His name is Saint Honorius. Now, he goes, oh, you're worshipping an old dead guy. Well, no, he's not dead. And this is where you have funny year has a piece that's bad. So chemesis correct explains that chemesis means to sleep. It means people are sleeping, but in some cases they're no longer sleeping because they're now active and dealing with them. And this is sort of an open sign from God that uh, uh, that these people are selected to sort of continue on with their work uh, uninterrupted. LeBron's favorite words. Oh, and ironically enough, it actually has uh, Gnostic uh, sort of uh, meanings because it means the subtle subtext uh, things that are not often seen will require a uh, degree of uh, a degree of security uh, to kind of deal with. So this talks about, in many ways, nuance could be referred to as the levels of Illuminati required to understand certain things, your level of illumination. Of course, the Holy Grail, if you will, would be Knowledge 
are the things that are beyond. Seemingly beyond us. And this is where you would look for uh, hidden codes in books. This is sort of nature's dimension code, the Bible code. Um, people thought that there were codes hidden within uh, works of dimension, he hid codes within there. Uh, but the thing is that it is, it, it is indeed the codes where he hid it in art. But it wasn't just a simply dimension, but a number of things. But the thing is, you had to know, you had to understand geometry. If you didn't understand geometry and mathematics, then you, then you would, you wouldn't understand this. This is why Newton and Leibniz were using calculus. What happens is that Newton and Leibniz did not actually create calculus. They didn't invent it. They were using it, and their notation in their use as alchemists was passed forward as calculus. And it's understanding that there is hidden understanding, there is hidden understanding within mathematics that gives you access to divine this and this into the magic of the universe. What, what a lot of people are now calling zero point energy. And they would use calculus to get at this sort of understanding, this underlying nature that is typically hidden in the world. And a lot of times they would say, oh yeah, the, 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 the codes are hidden in new ones. They said, this is what the people who study the Bible in great detail, these Roman Catholic uh, uh, scholars who uh, uh, theologians who understand the Bible from their own claims. Although one goes back to Becky Dipper, because uh, one of the biggest things that missed was the, uh, was the nature of the Antichrist. And the Antichrist would come as Christ, he would replace Christ. And the people who followed him would not know the difference. They couldn't see it. how you would describe the Roman Catholic Church around the papacy, that the papacy is titled the Emperor of Christ, the Antichrist. I say before that anti is the Greek word that is synonymous with vicar or vicarious. And they created the entire vicar system based on this, based on the understanding that this person, this Pope, was a replacement for Christ and God on earth. And it was through him that also of that salvation occurs. So this is where the term nuance comes out of. It comes in quite a bit more of the of the early the early early European church. The Western church. And they would use these terms to describe things that they would not understand. Get words, get meanings. The whole the initiate people would ever understand. Unless you were part of the initiate, you weren't even shown some of this information. This is where hidden information and knowledge comes from. But of course, what happens is people die out, theories die out, uh, libraries and archives are lost, left to dust. And when people go around looking for libraries to sort of scan in and uh, add to the internet libraries, they make their way on the internet. And if you're a person like myself who just simply wanders around the internet, and there's a lot of massive libraries. So that's how you find it. You kind of, you kind of bump into it. You don't necessarily know what it is in issue, but, but uh, as you go through it, you realize you've got a document of some significant uh, underpinning. This goes, you know, this goes as well with, with uh, uh, when you look, when you're talking about Islam, you look at history, at the history of Islam, and the things you don't go to, there are, there's a site uh, that is a UK site where a lot of people go to, and it's, a lot, and it's referenced even by uh, Wikipedia as an authoritarian site 
Krishna Count and became it was given the name Ram Das. So we look at Ram or Ram. The Indians pronounce it Ram. R A M D A S S. Ram Das. You go look him up and you'll find Dr. Wheel. With Dr. Wheel you also find Dr. Oz, you'll find Dr. Phil, and you'll also find Oprah. So there is your connection. There this is the, this is your connection. To a large chunk of what's going on today is it comes out of uh, the the sort of the Ram Das line. That's why I say Ram Das is so important. You may find other names that are more obscure and stuff like that, but it, you want to connect it to uh, people within history, with it within the periods. And this is why I use Lionel LeBron because he is enough of a personality that he reflects a lot of what they call the modernist view of humanism. Uh, and is bemoaning the loss of the humanist world. Now, he doesn't see what's going on. He doesn't understand that this is actually the end of humanism that it was written about by Dostoevsky years ago, 1800, late 1800s. Dostoevsky wrote about this. And he wrote this in a book called Crime and Punishment where the key character in the, in, in the book of Crime and Punishment is a humanist. It's right before he commits suicide at the end, not the ending part of the book, is that he's committing suicide. He commits suicide. But before that, because it's, it's the suicide is considered the ultimate act of humanism, the ultimate control, he is un understood that it was part of being a humanist. Being a humanist is grand destruction. Destruction and murder for no particular reason. This is what the this is what the uh, Lionel is talking about. This is what he's puzzling. Oh, so this is never been seen before. Badass. This is this is what communism is. This is the line that communism follows. So does uh, national socialism. Does socialism follow something? 